Hey guys, it's Miss Miklos, and um, we are continuing on um, with graphing. And this is just a worksheet, but we're using it as notes so you can find it on Blackboard. Um, but the reason why I wanted to go through this with you guys, um, we're just going to go through the beginning, the second half of it, um, we are going to go ahead and do um, as our next lesson. But I just want to spend some time looking at all of these separately and um, figuring out, first of all, what type of curve is it, and then going ahead and sketching the graph. So if we look at number one, it says r equals three. So I know r equals three, and I'm gonna zoom in here. Looks to me like it is a circle. So this is the nice circle that all we need to do is go out three and draw our circle around that third mark. Okay, number two, r equals five sine theta. Some of you guys might be thinking that this looks like a rose because it is in that form. However, our in value here is one. So we said if that is the case, it is actually a circle. Now since it is a positive sign, remember we said sine goes with y, so I'm gonna go up one, two, three, four, five, and put a point at the pole, and draw our circle. Okay, number three, r equals three cosine two theta. This time this is a rose because we have an in value that is something other than one. So things we need to figure out, first of all, since n is two, that means that our number of petals is going to be four because we said whenever we have um, an even number, we have to double it. Our first petal, since it is at cosine, is going to be at zero degrees. And in fact, it's going to be at three zero degrees because this value here is three. Now, the way that we're going to find the distance between the petals, or the angle between the petals, is 360 divided by our number of petals, so it's going to be 90 degrees apart. So I'm going out to the right three, and then I'm going to continue moving 90 degrees. And there we go. Number four, we have this r cosine theta, and we need to remember r cosine theta is equal to x. So that means that this is just a line. So that means I'm gonna to go to the right one, two, three, four, and draw a vertical line that is going straight up and straight down. Number five, r equals four plus sine theta. The thing that jumps out to me is this plus sign. So I'm thinking that this is a limosone. Now I'm not quite sure what kind of limosone it is yet, so I have to compare those different values, the absolute value of four and the absolute value of one. The absolute value of four is greater than one, so I know that this is going to be dimpled. So I'm going to make the r theta chart and I know we need to do 0, 90, 180, and 270 because we're doing all of our quadrantals. So I have 4 plus sine of 0. Sine of 0 is 0, so I get 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm going to plot as we go here. If I put in 90, sine of 90 is 1, so 4 plus 1 is 5. So that gives me an ordered pair at 5, 90 degrees. Sine of 180 is 0, so I get 4 again. So that would give me right there. And then when I put in 270, that is negative one. So four minus one is three. And then we're gonna go ahead and sketch our dimpled. Now, when I'm grading this, guys, um, I would definitely be looking for this and the graph along with you labeling what it is. Okay, but these ordered pairs definitely tell me that you understand what to do. 6, r equals negative 4 sine 3 theta. I notice that we have a monomial here, so I'm thinking that this is going to be a rose. This time, our n is 3. So since n is 3, that's an odd number, so our number of petals is going to be 3. 
The other thing that I can figure out right away, our petals are going to be 120 degrees apart. Our first petal, since this is sine, is going to be at 90 divided by n, so it's going to be at 30 degrees. So it's going to be at negative 4, 30 degrees. I knew it was negative 4 because of that value right there. So I'm going to go to the right 1, 2, 3, 4, and then move 30 degrees. From there, I know that I need to go ahead and move 120 degrees. So that would be 30, 60, 90, 120. And then I'm going to move again 30, 60, 90, 120. So I know that I'm going pretty quickly through um, this lecture, but the whole point here is just for us to kind of recognize things and get used to them. Okay, number seven, r sine theta equals negative four. I know r sine is equal to y. So this is saying y equals negative four, which we know is a line. So I'm gonna go down one, two, three, four, and draw a horizontal line. Number eight, right away before I even read it, I see this plus, so I'm thinking it is some sort of limosome. So I'm going to compare the four and the negative two, and since four is greater than two, once again, this is going to be dimpled. So I'm going to make an R theta chart again with 0, 90, 180, and 270. Negative 4 plus 2 cosine of 0. Cosine of 0 is 1, so negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. So I'm going to go to the right, or I'm sorry, to the left 2 and not move anywhere. If I put in 90 degrees, negative 4 plus 2 times cosine 90. Cosine 90 is 0, so I get negative 4, which puts me down there. When I put 180 in, 2 times the cosine of 180, cosine 180 is negative 1, so I get negative 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then when I put in 270, cosine of 270 is 0, so I get negative 4. So this time, even though these were all negative, notice it still formed dimpled just like we said it was going to. So I'm going to go ahead and draw this out. Now it would make sense that this is symmetric on the x-axis because it is a cosine graph. 9, r equals 5. This is a circle. So I'm going to go out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and go ahead and draw a circle at the appropriate angle. So hopefully this just gives you a little taste of what our homework's going to be like, what quizzes are going to be like. Okay, obviously we didn't do any limbness skates here or anything, but um, I hope that graphing them just feels good and that we're able to identify what type of polar graph each thing is. The final thing that we are going to um, do in this chapter is look at the graphs and write the equation, and that is what our next lecture is going to be on.